Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining us today. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we ask that you would help us to understand that we can truly gain when we truly accept losing your way. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Our text for today is found in the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 21, verse 22, and chapter 42, verse 10. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. That's Job chapter 1, verse 21 through 22, and chapter 42, verse 10. Verse 21 reads, And he said, Naked came I from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all of this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrong. And then uh, chapter 42, verse 10 reads, And the Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he had prayed for his friends, and the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Uh, our subject for today is how uh, a father loses and gains. How to lose as a father so that you can truly gain. Uh, and happy Father's Day to every, all of the fathers today that's joining us. Now, let's just, just jump into the message. And it starts with uh, fathers are assigned the position of head of household. Now, that's God's rule. Man's rules, according to the U.S. Tax Code number 26 in, in general, it says that an individual shall be considered a head of a household if and only if such an individual is not married at the close of his or her taxable year uh, and is not a surviving spouse. This has many parts uh, that are included in the tax code, which is large in its definition. Now, Job's life is a precursor to the life of Jesus Christ. Job prepares us to understand Jesus' message in words and in deeds in a better way. Job not only helps us to see a picture of patience, but right living according to God and not to man. Job highlights the words of Jesus Christ in Mark uh, chapter 8, verse 36, when he says, For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit or lose his soul? Don't get uh, me wrong now. By no means. I'm not selling poverty or name it and claim it or riches. I'm not, I'm not trying to convince anybody that the Bible instructs us the to be poor the bible does not teach us uh that we should be poor it does not teach us that we can be assured of a place in heaven by being poor nor does it uh says that by being rich that that will keep us from getting to heaven god wants us to realize that what we have or what we do not have uh, doesn't truly make us somebody or nobody. Being a good steward over what God has given us helps solidify our character, and our character is important to God. There are many, many uh, things that money can't buy. Money can't buy us peace. Money can't buy us joy or health. There's a song uh, uh, from some years ago that was titled uh, Can't Buy Me Love, composed by Paul McCarthy of the Beatles. And, and the list goes on and on what money can't buy. In 2 John uh, uh, verse 13, it reads, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health 
even as thy soul prospereth. Now that's God talking to us. And 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 and, and so God does not uh, wish for us to uh, be poor, but he wishes that for us to prosper and be in good health, even as our soul prosper. God wants our, our, our physical lives to line up somewhat with our spiritual lives or our soul. God wants us to have a good life, and he gives us all things to enjoy, as a matter of fact. First Timothy chapter 6 uh, verse 17 through 19 reads, As for the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty, nor to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. They are to do good and to be rich in good works to be generous and ready to share, thus storing up treasures for themselves as a good foundation for the future, treasures in heaven, for instance, so that they may take hold of that which is truly life. So in, in, in other words, God wants us to enjoy riches. As a matter of fact, he, he wants us to to enjoy everything. And, and one way that we can enjoy everything is to have some money to, to do some things with. But don't forget the importance of helping others and sharing. Uh, it's not wrong to possess riches, but it's terribly wrong to be possessed by your riches. Too often we misinterpret 1 Timothy chapter uh, 6, verse 10 and 11. You know the verse. It says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which uh, while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, or you, O man of God, a woman of God, especially today I'm talking to fathers, fathers of God. Flee these things and follow after righteousness and godliness and faith and love and patience and meekness. In other words, start out by seeking ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all of the riches, all of these things shall be added unto you. Don't put nothing before God. Don't try to obtain status in life, riches in life, uh, positions on your job. Don't don't try to try to get a the best house in, in the neighborhood. Don't try to drive the the best car before you make sure that you have got a personal relationship with God. Hebrews chapter thirteen verse five says, "Keep your lives." free from love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Job's three friends were misguided. They judged Job based upon their limited knowledge, uh, even of a close friend. And too often, let God start blessing somebody, a close friend of yours. And the first thing, before you know it, you're judging them. I won't go into some of the ways that I've been judged in my past when the Lord started blessing me. Job chapter 1, verse 21 and 22 again says, And he said, Naked came I from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave. And the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know the story of how God had blessed Job tremendously. He was one of the greatest men in the East. And, and, and then all of a sudden, uh, all of those blessings had started taking flight and leaving him. And if you try to hold on to anything in this life too tight, it will get away from you. Uh, 
but, but let it be a lesson as it was to Job and a lesson to others, especially your children and, and, and those that are close to you. Job lost his children. He lost all of his possessions. He lost his health. And, 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 and he even lost the support of his helpmate. She started suggesting, she, you'd notice that the Bible was quiet on the statements of his wife. And whenever things are going good, there are those that will keep their mouth closed, but let things start going bad. Then they got all everything to say. Can't shut them up. She started telling Job, you need to curse God and die. Here you are running around trying to maintain your integrity and, and, and you're losing everything. And Job simply said, you sound like one of those foolish ones. Should I take from God and then not, if I, should I take good and not be happy to, when God takes something away? We should have maintain an even keel. When God gives us, we should be happy and we should not fall apart when God starts relieving us of some, some things. God just might be clearing out space. Mm for to give us something better. Let me get back to, to the verses. Job chapter 13, verse 15 says, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. But I will maintain mine own way before him. In, in, in other words, my relationship with the Lord won't change. My love for him won't change. Too often we just look at it one side when we say that, 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 that God will not allow anything to stop him from loving me. We ought not let anything stop us from loving God, especially when he gives us everything and he loves us tremendously, unend, un, unendingly. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Uh, Job chapter 2 verse 3 says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that he, there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feared God and issued evil, and still holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause? And then Job chapter 2, verse 9 and 10 said, Then, uh, back to his wife, Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. Keying in on the word integrity. Verse 10 says, But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What shall I receive good of the, at the hand of God, and shall I not receive evil? In all that he did, Job uh, did not sin with his lips. Job maintained his integrity no matter what. Just like jo uh, uh, David, King David, trusted God no matter what. No matter how much David messed up, he trusted God. No matter how much uh, God allowed to happen to him, he still trusted God. And we should have that type of relationship with the Lord also. No matter what goes on, we should still trust him. We should maintain our integrity. A good word that helps me. You have to find your own word. Maybe this one will help you. Maybe it won't. But it helps me to understand the meaning of integrity. And that word is reliability. Can God rely on me so much that he suggests to Satan that he test me or try me? Proverbs chapter 2 verse 6 through 9 says, and this is the King James Version says, For the Lord gives wisdom out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keeps, keepeth the path of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Verse 9 says, 
then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity. Yea, every good path. Fathers, we need to understand every good path that God has for us and not complain. Whatever happened, we need to learn to say, I won't complain. And then Job chapter 27, verse 8 through 10 says, For what is the hope of the hypocrite? Though he hath gained, when God taketh away his soul, will God hear his cry when trouble comes upon him? Will he delight himself in the Almighty? Will he always call upon God? When we are reliable, trustworthy, dependable, then God can use us in his service. Do you pray for your children daily, not knowing what they have done, what kind of life they're living? Do you pray for them just in case? I know you're hoping, like I do, that they live right. But just in case, that's what Job was doing, praying for his children just in case they sinned against God. Do you offer God the gift of thanksgiving for your children, your family, your church uh, family, your friends, even your enemies? Do you pray for your enemies? Can God depend on you to use the time he gives you for his glory? Or do you forsake the assembling of yourself together as the manner of some is? Do you not have time to help somebody that you come across in need? 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 14 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I need to wrap it up by reminding us that God does restore what we lose or what we are willing to give up. And he restores it much more. Again, part of our text for today, Job chapter 42 verse 10 says, and the Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he had prayed for his friends and the love and, and, and the Lord rather gave Job twice as much as he had before. Jesus laid down his life one Friday evening on an old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary. He died for lost sinners. He gave his life for sinners, for those that were against God. He chose to come down and save the lost. And here's the shout, the first shout. Early on the third day morning, he rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. All that he laid down was restored. And then here's the second shout. Every lost soul that put their trust in him, not only was he able to pick up his life, but every lost soul that put their trust in him, he will raise up in the latter days. And he's doing some raising up right now out of some of the mess we get in, some of the mistakes we make, some of the wrong choices we make. And here's the last shout for today. He gives us power to live right, to walk right, to talk right, to see and hear right. Because so often we hear things that we ain't got no business hearing. Things that will not edify the body of Christ. We say things. We see things the wrong way. We see people the wrong way. And that is... We need to learn to see more and hear more with our hearts or through our hearts instead of these eyes and ears. Jesus gives us power to be thankful in whatever state we find ourselves. He gives us power to be content 
That's a good lesson, fathers, to teach your children and everybody that come into your presence. Let us close. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for teaching us to be willing to lose in order to truly gain. Teach us to possess riches and not allow riches to possess us. In Jesus' priceless name we pray. Amen. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers and uh, happy Father's Day to everybody. And uh, this is not soul train, but I'll end it in a similar way. Possess peace, love, and joy above all things. Bye-bye.